We are out in Milwaukee, Wisconsin at the Harley-Davidson headquarters on Juneau Avenue. I am with Brad Richards, Harley-Davidson's Vice President of Design with the all new limited edition FXR ST, the El Diablo, <laughs> right, man. Yeah, yeah. The second edition to the Icons collection. Brad, this thing is stellar. Tell me a little bit about why this bike right now? Well, I mean, you and I have had conversations, but I'm sure folks that are watching are aware of Lowrider ST, and that was a that was a bike that was an evolution of the Lowrider S, and it was really an answer to all the bikes that folks were making, air-cooled um, Harley-Davidson performance motorcycles, primarily in the West Coast, but they're all over the world now. Um, taking an air-cooled Harley-Davidson V-twin, uh, you know, kind of making it perform better than it ever could, giving it some lean angle, getting, getting it up off the ground, punching out the performance. And that was really Lowrider S, right? That's what we were trying to do. And then with Lowrider ST, we have the addition of some long range touring options like the fairing and the bags. So it's just a, it's sort of the next step in that evolution. People were doing it anyway. It's a homage to the 83 FXRT in, in many ways. What's cool about El Diablo is it even leans into that lineage even more with the, the pinstripe trajectories and so on. And yeah, so tell me a little bit about the inspiration for, for the paint scheme. So, I mean, if you think about FXRT, early 80s, a lot of creative endeavors happening in the world, especially in Southern California. Growing up, I was a skateboarder. I still skate from time to time. But like, I remember the early 80s really skateboarding. It was punk rock, custom van culture with incredible paint schemes like this, um, low riders with paint schemes like this, and then just the kind of the status quo being questioned. And I think what's interesting about FXRT is that it was a bike that was really questioning the status quo of Harley Davidson at the time, you know? Yeah. And so there, there were all these things that seemed like it, that were kind of aligning in terms of the narrative of the motorcycle. And so we just decided to lean into that kind of, that era with the paint, the bike, it made sense. And then um, we just really wanted to celebrate Lowrider ST and how popular this motorcycle has been. And of course we have the Icons collection, which is really important. It's a key piece of the, um, of the Hardwire Stage 2. And we decided to like, put all these things together and create a great motorcycle. Yeah, last time we were uh, talking about the Icons collection, I asked yeah. about what bike might be coming next. Yeah. And, and you said it was going to be for a very different customer. That's right. Which is absolutely true. Um, right. Right. But they both seem to be, I mean, fared, hard bagged, and mm -hmm. sort of aimed at the core. Yeah. Uh, can yeah. you talk to me a little bit about the strategy in, in selecting this bike as the next Icon? Well, I mean, Icons, of course, it's, you know, these, they're supposed to be bikes that are homages to, to past iconic motorcycles in our family, in our, in, our, in our portfolio. Another way that I like to think about Icons is if, if you walked into the archives of the museum and left with a motorcycle, and then went back to your garage and kind of put a modern touch on it. Yeah. And that's what we've really done with the first two Icons. I would say that, yes, they are, they do speak to the core, but there's, in our mind, there's two different cores. There's sort of the traditional core, yep. and there's what we call the contemporary core. And the contemporary core is really someone that this motorcycle is, is aimed at. And that's a slightly more, a slightly younger rider who's more concerned with performance, handling, canyon carving, versus profiling. So in our mind, they are two different customers. Um, they're both passionate about the brand. We love them both. They're both extremely important for the hardwire stage two. But this one, to me, is a, is a slightly more youthful take on the, on the concept. So when the original FXRT came out in 1983, mm -hmm. it was a pretty innovative bike. You know, it yep. was lighter than the Honda Aspencade and the Yamaha Venture, yeah. and it had a new, you know, better handling chassis than Harley's touring models. Right. How is that spirit of innovation kept alive in this model? Well, that's a great question. I mean, I think a lot of the kind of the, the, the sort of the initial DNA of FXRT really came from Nova. If you want to go back even further, for those of you who want to spend some time at the museum, that's a great one to research when you're there because um, it's still sitting there on the floor. But um, certainly the fairing, um, the, the saddlebags, and just the mindset of a more contemporary performance first Harley-Davidson really came from Nova. And so um, to that end, if you think about the 2018 Softail architecture, we really, you know, we, we really made a, a, a huge jump forward in terms of the performance and the dynamic capability of the motorcycle, much like uh, the 83 FXRT did at that time with the bikes that were in the, in the portfolio, the touring motorcycles. So to me, it's like, it's the same kind of innovative push with thinking differently about the, the kind of the dynamic capability of the motorcycle, but still packaging it in something that feels very Harley Davidson, um, which is exactly what I think FXRT did. What, what about this bike makes it perfect for 2023? Well, I mean, certainly this, this I mean, the strongest trend right now on, you know, in, in, 
air cooled Harley Davidson is is it's it's performance baggers and it's uh, air cooled performance um, cruisers. And yeah. so this is hitting right at the kind of right in the meat of that. I think I think we're at critical mass. You know, it's perfect timing. And I think there's a lot of folks out there that are we're kind of waiting for what is the next step for Harley Davidson. In our, in our, if you think about the history of the of the of the motorcycle designs, um, we were sitting in a space three four years ago that was pretty. It was about profiling and kind of exaggerated proportions and big paint and big big audio, and you know, all of a sudden there's this new generation that's starting to think about Harley Davidson in a different way. They love the brand, but they didn't really connect to any of the trends that were happening at that time. And so this performance space that's happened through FXRT, through Dyna, now into Softail and Lowrider S, Lowrider ST. Um, it's all playing into that idea of it's Harley Davidson, but it's really Harley Davidson in a new way for a new customer. So the Icons collection is really going in this direction of feeling very premium. It's very exclusive. Mm -hmm. yep. And when you look at Harley Davidson's numbers historically, mm -hmm. in 2006, the company sold roughly 350,000 motorcycles yeah, about right. for $5.8 billion annual revenue. Mm -hmm. In 2021, they sold 188,000 motorcycles right. for a really similar annual revenue. Yep. Uh, what part does a motorcycle like this play in that overall strategy? Well, one of the foundational pillars of the hardwire is really about creating desirability. And so when we thought about how do we create desirability in motorcycles, well, collections came to mind because it's a way for us to take a motorcycle that we've, you know, we have kind of a, a a kind of a core production motorcycle like Lowrider ST and make something very special out of it. I mean, they are very limited. We try to do less than 1,500 uh, worldwide. That number varies a little bit. We just want them to be extremely desirable so people think about the brand a little bit differently, are attracted to these motorcycles, and that's really what we're talking about with icons. Uh, so you mentioned West Coast culture, tall bike culture, you yeah, know, yeah. tall shocks, tall socks. Uh, were, there any, <laughs> were there any shows or builders or artists specifically that you were looking at when you were developing this bike? I mean, we just, we always pay attention to the West Coast. I think you and I have talked about this before. I think there's, um, in a lot of ways, uh, the West Coast is, is sort of the, uh, you know, it's where you see a lot of the genesis of like counterculture and things, people kind of approaching things differently and asking why and asking why do we have to do it that way and why don't we try it this way and, and then just trying to stand out and be different, you know, that's, 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 that's all part of um, the West Coast. It's also all part of Harley Davidson. So uh, taking a motorcycle that, you know, at its core probably was never really des designed to do some of the things that these folks are doing with the bikes, right? Yeah. And they want to they do it in a, in a way that feels athletic and youthful and has a performance vein. A lot of these riders group on dirt bikes and sport bikes. And so I think that's where a lot of this strange mashup has, has, has come from. And yeah. so it's a way for them to kind of connect to bikes that mean something to them that they grew up riding, but do it on a brand that really means something from a historical standpoint. Yeah, yeah. you mentioned the original bike in 1983. It's obviously being used in a, lot, in a much different way in the custom community and the custom culture there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, talk to me a little bit about, about mixing modern Harley design language with a product that was developed in 1983. Well, I mean, that's the cool thing about Harley Davidson is a lot of the, um, a lot of the design ethos is like stuff, it's, it's an ethos that we use on every motorcycle and has been used for, for years and years and years, yeah. for decades, really, since the beginning. Um, powertrain is the crown jewel. Um, celebrate the machinery. Try not to hide anything behind plastic as much as you can. Try to you know, celebrate this, the purity of the motorcycle. Make it as pure as possible. Make it as honest as possible. Use authentic materials. You, of course, you have, to be, you, have to, you have to pay attention to function uh, and form, but you also have to pay attention to emotion, right? You know, it's yeah, something that Willie kind of beat into our heads. People can buy less expensive motorcycles that are probably a little bit lighter and maybe be faster, but you lose the soul of, a, you, you're not gonna have the soul of a Harley Davidson. And that's what people I think are really connected to and that, what they're willing to pay for. And I think that's what plays so well with Harley Davidson and connects the customers to our products. There isn't really anything out there right now that's similar to this, but some of our other bikes, there are. If you think about the adventure space, there are bikes that are um, are, are very capable adventure bikes as well, but you know people love Pan America because it's a different take on it, and it's fresh, and it's original, and it's very American. We all, we still to this day use the same principles and approach as the four founders did when they created, you know, the 1903, the first model. Uh, and lastly, is there any hint you can give me at what might be coming next for the Icons collection? <laughs> No, I, you know, when I, when I was hinting at this one, I was so excited because I knew, I knew, you know, I knew we had fire in a bottle oh, and yeah. um, I, unfortunately we couldn't, I couldn't say anything. That's, that's one of the most difficult things about this job is my head is already in 2026 or 27, but, uh, but in all seriousness, 
we've got some awesome icons coming. You have over 120 years of bikes to choose from and ideas to kind of proliferate. So there's all kinds of just really, really juicy candy on the shelf, and I can't wait to show it to everybody. Rad, man. Well, yeah. thank you so much. You, Always great talking yeah. to you. Likewise, man. Thanks for watching. If you like what we're doing, like, follow, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.